I watched the movie Sand, and I'm telling you so you don't have to. The whole movie screamed, and now you'll see why. The spectacle, of course, is magnetic. The movie literally sucks you to the screen. So, at night, there is a party of American youth on the beach. Plastic cups, music. Someone being held upside down over a keg of beer. Someone showing his tits. Someone doing somersaults. Two guys dragging some slimy egg-shaped crap out of the darkness. A fat guy who is asleep is having his dick drawn on his face with a felt-tip pen. The penis drawn on the black man's face with a black felt-tip pen is very hard to see in the dark. One of the girls has a sad face. For this, she is immediately assigned as the main character and tells us that her name is Kaylee. Next, everything blends into a kaleidoscope of fun. Abruptly, it's morning. Hideous, disturbing music begins to play, as if someone is shoving a violin into a nightstand. In a beach booth with a wooden platform around the perimeter, our complicated heroine Kaylee and party crasher Mitch wake up. Mitch doesn't look very good, so Kylie gets upset. Next to the booth is a convertible, with two defiantly heterosexual character couples sleeping in it. Next to it is a wooden table on which another girl is napping. On top of the girl lies her breasts. Her breasts are also napping, uncovered by anything. Kaylee steps out onto the platform around the booth and looks into the convertible. In the driver's seat sits her ex-boyfriend John, who has clearly heterosexually slept with the girl in the passenger seat. Kaylee is jealous, even though she seems to have also heterosexually slept with Mitch, and looks around, searching for other partygoers with her eyes. But there is no one else. Kaylee watches sadly as a seagull lands on the beach sand. Perhaps she is thinking at this moment, I'm a seagull. Not that, I'm an actress. The hideousness of the disturbing music intensifies. The seagull suddenly starts beating its wings trying to fly off the sand, but can't. The seagull screams and gets sucked into the sand in front of Kaylee. Just as the seagull is being sucked in, the girl wakes up with her breasts on the wooden table. She is about to get up. Don't walk on the sand, Kaylee yells to her and farts her eyes at her own cleverness. But the girl with the breast steps on the sand and sticks her feet to it. She yells that she's stuck. Stuck? All the other characters take turns repeating. Trying to get her feet off the sand, the girl with the breast dips her hand into the sand and her hand sucks on it too. The girl with the breast yells, is she okay? Maybe something's wrong? The rest of the characters show sensitivity and timely concern. In doing so, they cringe nauseatingly. If there were an acting instructor among us, he'd slit his wrists. The girl sucks in deeper and screams harder. The guy in the back of the convertible rushes to her aid, falls flat on the sand, immediately succumbs to it and starts screaming too. Does everyone else scream, you ask? Yes, they do. Do something, yells the heterosexual partner of the suctioned flat foot. Start the car, yells the girl to the driver, Jonah. Start the car, yells Jonah. Tsst. The car does and won't start. You'll be fine, again yells the partner to the floaty guy sucking in. Baby, look at me. The floating suction, not stopping to yell, pulls his head away from the sand, apparently to look at it. Half of his face is already sucked in, and just with a pop sound, an eye is sucked in. The girl with breasts is sucked in passing somewhere on the edge of the frame in defocus. No one is interested in her. The guy is more interesting, so he's dove-sassed in the center of the frame, while the others yell at each other at fading decibels. Kaylee is the only one not yelling suppressing everyone around her with waves of smarts emanating from her. She gently brings her palm close to the sand. A transparent noodle emerges from the sand and immediately reaches out to her palm. The noodle ripples and wiggles predatorily. The noodle wants to suck flesh. Suddenly, a black fat man named Gilbert is shown. Gilbert is sticking out, and literally. He is wedged tightly with his bottom half into a barrel that stands in the middle of the beach about 15 feet away from the others. The top half of Gilbert is asleep, head bowed with his dick drawn across his face. In the daylight, the cock can be seen more clearly. Gilbert wakes up and starts screaming to be released. He twitches and rocks the barrel. The others yell for Gilbert not to swing. Gilbert has slept through the suction of the two men and the seagull, so he has to explain everything all over again and ask to hang out of the barrel for a couple more hours while waiting for the tide to come in. What the tide has to do with it is completely incomprehensible, but no one screams for a while. Kylie is drinking vodka. The partner of the floaty guy is writing a letter to her mother. 
Gilbert is wailing quietly. They can't call and call for help, because all the partygoers have stashed their phones in the trunk of the convertible at night. And they can't open the trunk without getting out of the car. Time is running out. Gilbert sticks out and casts a fat shadow like he's a sundial. Suddenly, Mitch finds a vial in the booth. Kaylee snatches the vial from him and runs to show it to the convertible passengers. Look what I found! Everyone is thrilled. Kaylee throws the life-saving vial into the convertible and... And everyone starts smearing because it's sunscreen. While everyone is smearing, Kaylee tries to brainstorm. The brainstorming works. They guess that everyone else at the party didn't just go home, but got first class sucked in overnight. That's where Gilbert starts yelling again. He can't just stick around anymore. But Jonah says it's okay. Sunscreen will help you, man, Jonah says. Now I'll throw it on you and you'll be fine. The passenger doubts Jonah's ability to get the cream to Gilbert, but Kaylee says that Jonah can, and that she believes in him. The scene reeks of heroism. Jonah throws the cream. Gilbert catches it and begins voluptuously smearing the whitish slurry on her hands. Now we understand what we should have used to paint his dick on his face. Burdened by the need to move the plot forward, Kaylee sees two halves of the night's slimy egg in the distance. The disturbing music comes out in a new round of hideousness. In the next five minutes, everyone figures out that something has hatched from there and has apparently been pounded into the sand. Kaylee's cleverness is now not just noticeable, but defiantly sticks out against the rest of the characters like Gilbert out of a barrel. Without giving the others even a second's respite from her own cleverness, Kaylee runs into the booth, climbs into the portable refrigerator and snatches the sausages from there. She runs back out onto the platform, swings around, and tosses one sausage onto the sand. She wants to find out how far the infernal funchos have spread on the beach. The sausage gets sucked in. Kaylee tosses again, and the undersand noodles devour the second sausage. At this point, I really wanted to eat because horrors are horrors. But when they show sausage and pasta, it's hard to resist. But I hang in there and keep watching. Since no one has yelled in the movie for 10 minutes, Gilbert starts yelling. He demands that they stop throwing sausages. Gilbert is ignored and a third sausage is thrown. The sausage sticks. All eyes are on the sausage. Seconds seem like an eternity. And yay, it's a triumph. The noodle doesn't eat the third sausage. Suddenly, Jonah decides to act. He takes the two surfboards propped up against the car, puts them on the sand, and walks across them to the wooden table next to which the girl with the breasts is sucked in. Why he would want to go there is unclear, since the sausage of salvation is the other way around. As he takes one last step from the surf to the table, a sly noodle takes and slides the surf back. To keep from falling, Jonah clings to the table with his hands and stands in the bar. At the same time, he follows the main principle of the film. I yell, therefore I exist. The noodle gets up, climbs out of the sand higher, and tickles Jonah's belly button. Jonah yelps and hops up on the table, too. Her belly is festering and bleeding and Jonah is writhing on the table. Hell's hazelnut is poisonous, too. After squirming for a while, Jonah wakes up, finds a bag on the table with some water in it, and a beer. Everyone is happy. After a nice drink, everyone decides they should try and get the phones out of the trunk. The next ten minutes are spent trying to open the trunk standing on the back bumper of the convertible. Ooh, a challenge like throwing sunscreen. The girl of a sucked-up flat guy climbs to carry out the mission. When the trunk is open, the phones are at hand, and the tension has reached its limit. Someone nearby honks the horn. The girl slips and falls on the trunk lid, slamming it with herself and pinches her fingers. She screams in record time. A beach patrol jeep pulls up to the screamers. It was the one honking the horn. There's a beach patrolman inside who thinks they're all stoned. That's why they yell all this nonsense about sand being a deadly horror noodle. The patrolman gets out of the car. Everyone's yelling except for the pinched passenger. She stopped yelling for some reason and is quieter than water beneath the sand. The beach patrolman has thick-soled boots and noodles, so he paces back and forth and commands everyone to come to him. Everyone shuts up and the patrolman starts threatening to pull out his pepper spray and spray him. As he pulls out the can, the patrolman drops his keys bends down to get them and starts sucking his hand into the sand. With the last of his strength, he sprays the pepper spray on the suctioned hand, and the noodle temporarily releases it. But the hand is already chewed off. 
Everyone yells. The patrolman screams too, sucking in other body parts and asking for help. Kaylee, with a fearful face, walks down the wooden platform to him and quietly takes the pepper spray. A savvy man could use anything. Literally a minute after the patrolman is sucked in, Mitch is sucked in. Just a tragic accident. The railing at the dais broke. Everyone screams over Mitch. Then everyone builds some wooden bridges and climbs, all interrupted by the jealousy scenes Kaylee makes with Jonah and his festering belly and his current girlfriend. In the middle of the process, Kaylee and her date pull out a passenger pinched in the trunk. Without opening the trunk, they just grab her and yank her arm to make her holler harder. The pinched woman does not disappoint and screams with all her might. It becomes indirectly clear that they are all climbing into the beach patrolman's jeep to obscure what? There are no keys. They are sucked in. On the approach to the jeep, the pinched one stumbles and begins to fall to the sand. The clever Kaylee promptly makes her a straw. That is, she sprays the place of her estimated fall with pepper spray. The pinched one lies down and doesn't suck in. As she continues to lie there, she yells that all is well and she is not being sucked in. And then it starts sucking in. The ranks of the non-sucking dwindle. That leaves smart Kaylee, her half-alive ex-boyfriend John, the boyfriend's paramour, and Gilbert still sticking out of the barrel. I forgot to say, as the movie progresses, it turns out that no one has ever heterosexually slept with anyone at all. So Kaylee's love for Jonah is not overshadowed by anything but a bunch of dead friends around her. But we digress. The noodle eats through Gilbert's barrel from the inside out. Gilbert screams like a maniac and raises his arms to the sky. Three huge, fat noodles with some kind of tongs on the ends braid Gilbert's shoulders and suck him inside the barrel. Night falls. The three remaining non-suckers make it to the jeep, and then the giant. No, now it's no longer clear funchos, but giant chuka, luminous blue-green algae. They dangle back and forth, trying to snatch the shrieking heroes. Clever Kaylee grabs a can of gasoline from the side of the jeep, spills it around, and sets it on fire. The fire engulfs the tentacles and swirls them around in a whirlwind of incredibly, fantastically bad special effects. But the tentacles scream too. Kaylee climbs inside the Jeep. One of the tentacles nervously pulls the door handle toward him. Kaylee and the tentacle tug the Jeep door back and forth for a while. Then the tentacles spontaneously calm down and everything subsides. Kylie, Jonah, and the pals sit inside the Jeep and breathe loudly. But just 20 seconds later, they fall asleep in a serene sleep. Morning. They show Jonah, he's sitting up but clearly dead, and a dude in a wetsuit knocks on the door of the Jeep. The dude stands barefoot on the sand but doesn't yell or suck in, just asks if they're okay. The girls get out of the car, making silly sounds of relief, hug, and just walk away from the Jeep. Jonah's dead body doesn't occupy them at all. The last shots show a giant blob of seaweed sliding beneath the surface of the water toward the big city beach. Soon, everyone there will be screaming.